And the president said it, that they will resist all subpoenas. This is stonewalling information with respect to the Russian attack on our democracy in 2016. Tonight, NBC News reports the president's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr., has been subpoenaed to appear before the Senate Intelligence Committee. It's a committee led by a Republican, Senator Richard Burr of North Carolina. This is the first known subpoena of someone in Trump's immediate family. A source tells NBC News the committee wants Trump Jr. to, quote, answer questions about his contention that he had only limited knowledge of a project to build a Trump Tower in Moscow during the 2016 election. In September 2017, he told the Senate Judiciary Committee he was, quote, peripherally aware of it. Former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen testified that he briefed Don Jr. and Ivanka Trump on the project some 10 times. Earlier this year, the president's son tried to play down his family's role in that venture. It ultimately was Michael Cohen essentially trying to get a deal done. You know, he was there for a long time. He wasn't exactly a deal guy. He didn't bring too many to the table, so I don't think anyone took it all that seriously. That's the reality of what went on. Now, Trump Jr. did testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee in late 2017. That panel has investigated the 2016 Trump Tower meeting with several Russians, set up with a promise to deliver dirt on Hillary Clinton. The Mueller report says Michael Cohen, quote, recalled being in Donald J. Trump's office when Trump Jr. told his father that a meeting to obtain adverse information about Clinton was going forward. Mueller's document also notes Trump Jr. told Senate Judiciary that he did not tell his father about it. The New York Times reports tonight the Intelligence Committee now wants to question Trump Jr. about his account of the events surrounding the Trump Tower meeting. Times says the decision to subpoena Trump's eldest son, quote, appears to have come after discussions broke down about whether the younger Mr. Trump might appear voluntarily before the panel. Mr. Trump was highly unlikely to appear before the panel in person, three people close to him said, and one person said that he could invoke his Fifth Amendment rights in a written response. With us for more, Frank Fogluzzi, former FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence, and Jeremy Bash, former Chief of Staff at the CIA and Pentagon, as well as former Chief Counsel for the House Intelligence Committee. Thanks to both of you for being with us. So, again, a couple of pieces of information being reported out there. I think I mentioned this last block, the Washington Post reporting to, uh, tonight that this subpoena from the Senate Intelligence Committee to Trump Jr. actually went out last week. It's coming to light tonight, but it's a week old, apparently. Also, we can put this up. Some reporting here from Maggie Haberman of the New York Times adding some context here. She says, according a person close to Trump Jr., <clears throat> when he originally agreed to testify in front of the Senate Intel Committee in 2017, there was an agreement between Don and the committee that he would only have to come in and testify a single time as long as he was willing to stay for as long as they'd like, which Don did. Don continues to cooperate by producing documents and is willing to answer written questions. No lawyer would ever agree to allow their client to participate in what is an obvious stunt from a so-called Republican a senator and his boss, Mark Warner. Again, Maggie Haberman saying that is coming from a person close to Donald Trump Jr., taking some pretty clear shots there uh, at Senator Burr. Uh, Jeremy, let me start with you. Reading that from Maggie Haberman and some of the other reporting, the odds of Donald Trump Jr. actually appearing before this committee, what would you say they are? Pretty low. I think he'll resist or he'll take the fifth. But this is a moment of truth for Mitch McConnell. It's a moment of truth for Senate Republicans because their chairman, Richard Burr, who runs the Intelligence Committee with the vice chairman from Virginia, Mark Warner, has said that he has a lot of questions for Don Jr. now that he needs answers to. And clearly, Don Jr. has stiffed the committee. He's not coming back voluntarily. And it probably revolves around testimony he previously gave either to the Senate Judiciary Committee or to the Senate Intelligence Committee, probably about the Moscow Tower deal, which, of course, Don Jr. knew a lot about because he was integral in the Trump organization. And the Moscow Tower deal was the biggest deal going for the Trump organization at that time. Well, is that and, and what is your sense of this, Frank, in terms of what could potentially be learned by the committee uh, if they were able to get uh, access to Trump Jr. one more time? Uh, is it about whether he had a conversation with his father, giving him sort of a heads up about this Trump Tower meeting back in the 2016 campaign. Is that the, the biggest single thing that they could potentially try to learn at least? That, that would be number one on their list. Look, Don Jr. is one step away from his father, Michael Cohen, as you said. 
has said that Don Jr. tipped off uh, his father about this, the meeting at, at Trump Tower. So you're, you're one step away from the president himself having knowledge of something. And, and the whole Moscow, but here's the secondary thing. The Moscow Tower project goes to the heart of possible motivation as to why the president has so aligned himself with Russia and whether or not he's compromised financially and whether he was driven by dollar signs to get that that tower up and running. So it's it's significant that while Don Jr. has testified to multiple committees, it's the it's the Senate Intelligence Committee that's chosen to issue this subpoena. It tells us that he likely was called to come voluntarily. He said, I'm not going. And as Jeremy said, I think we're we're likely to see him invoke the fifth. Um, his, the other option is to is to uh, is to somehow bizarrely claim executive privilege, which uh, the, the, you know wouldn't hold water legally. But we may see it attempted. Some some brazen attempt to label Don Jr. as a presidential counselor and somehow try to carry uh, an umbrella over the entire Moscow Tower and Trump Tower meetings. I don't think it'll work. But don't be surprised if you see it. Well, and, and then, Jeremy, maybe can you play this out a little bit? If he invokes the fifth or if there's another maneuver that he that he uh, uh, favors here, does this land in the same place we've been talking about all of these other uh, 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 stare downs taking place between Congress and the White House where it ends up in a some kind of protracted months, maybe longer legal battle? It could be. And that that that's one way it could play out, Steve. But the other thing is that if the Senate Intelligence Committee suspects that Don Jr. misled them, that he gave testimony that wasn't truthful, they can make a criminal referral to the Department of Justice. And then you would have a criminal investigation unfold against Don Jr. for lying to Congress in the say, same way we saw other uh, uh, investigations of Michael Cohen and others. And, of course, in the Mueller report, it's a little unclear because the section about Don Jr.'s testimony is redacted. It's possible that the Members of Congress will look at the unredacted version, although it may be grand jury information. But I suspect that Don Jr. took the fifth in front of the grand jury as well. And so he's clamming up. He clearly has something big to hide. Uh, Frank, also the fact that we, we talked about in the first block there, uh, the administration now invoking privilege in terms of its dealings with the House Judiciary Committee over the full unredacted Mueller report. Are there implications here for that question everybody's been asking about when will the Judiciary Committee hear from Robert Mueller? Will the Judiciary Committee hear from him? And what would he be able to say if they do? Are there implications in the administration now claiming privilege for those questions? Yeah, yes, indeed. I, I believe there are, because if, if indeed Congress was looking to get Mueller in there as an end around to executive privilege and ask Mueller questions about what, did, what Don McGahn said or what someone else said, now they're claiming privilege. The White House is claiming privilege for the entire report, and the attorney general will attempt to exercise influence over Mueller and say, look, you, you can say what you had for breakfast or lunch, but everything else is privileged. So I'm, even if Mueller gets to the Hill, I would not expect him to give very fulsome testimony because of this privilege claim. Jeremy, there's also the question here, just we say this is the first subpoena, the first known subpoena to reach immediately into the Trump family, Trump's, Donald Trump's immediate family. Uh, the president was not reacting to this tonight at that rally. Are you expect that to change, though? Well, look, he could try to campaign on anything. Uh, that's been his his M.O. But I think, again, what's significant is that from a Republican chairman, from a Republican led Senate, you have a subpoena of the Trump family. If the White House and the Trump organization and the Trump family tries to stonewall the Republican Congress, then I think it undercuts the claim that this is some partisan witch hunt. After all, how could Republicans be engaged in a partisan witch hunt of a Republican president? Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.